Vox Box Podcast, Episode 32, Shooting Womp Rats is an Underappreciated Sport. What is thy bidding, my There is a great disturbance in the court. The Vox Box Star Wars Podcast. Your source for Star Wars comics, news, and more. And now your host, Michael Corley. Welcome back to VoxBox Star Wars Comic Book Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Corley. Thank you so much for listening today. We are covering Star Wars number 32. It is titled The Jawa Express. When we last left our heroes, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and their droids C-3PO and R2-D2, they had barely escaped the stormtroopers in Mos Eisley on Tatooine. However, one of the blasts had managed to hit. That's right. A stormtrooper had managed to hit something, had managed to hit the back of their speeder, leaking coolant. They are now in the Tatooine Desert, and both of the suns are on the rise in the Dune Sea. If they don't figure out something soon, they will die of heat. Luke thinks he can fix it, however, they still need coolant. Without coolant, the speeder will not run. That's when Chewbacca gets whiff of something and he heads over the ridge to check it out. Sure enough, it is not good news. It is stormtroopers, both walking and on laser dewbacks. They are coming to find them. There are far too many for the three of them to fight. However, C-3PO has an alternative. What if they drain the coolant from C-3PO and R2-D2? Both of them shut down, and then they can use just enough coolant to take the speeder to safety. Luke is hoping they can make it back to his ship, which can take them to safety. Unfortunately, when they make it back to the ship, it is being torn to pieces by who? Jawas! The Jawas are slowly taking apart the ship, thinking it to be salvage and scrap. Luke had hidden his ship, but as he says, those greedy little beggars can sniff out abandoned machinery anywhere. He yells at them to knock it off, and he starts to head down. But that's when Han has a different idea. Han decides to use his charm, and instead they ask for a lift. The Jawas want their speeder in payment and the deactivated droids. Luke, of course, will not have any of this. Han is saying, no, it's okay. I will use the bonus that I got from Jabba to buy back the droids when we get to Mos Eisley. Unfortunately, a sand crawler does not exactly go fast. It does, however, keep them from dying of exposure out in the Tatooine heat. Han Solo is having a little trouble in the crawler because it's meant for little tiny Jawas, and he keeps hitting his head on the ceiling. Luke is telling Han that they will keep their bargain, but that they have to finish their scavenging run first. And Han is asking him, well, how many days is that? And he says, no, 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 not three days. It's going to be three months for them to finish their scavenge. Han Solo is saying that he will be dead of concussions from banging into the ceiling before they get back to Mos Eisley. That's when the front of the Sandcrawler is stopped by a blast from a stormtrooper. He is saying to halt or they will use proton grenades if they fail to obey. They are searching for rebels in the area. Luke and Han get the feeling that they are not going to be protected in here and that the Jawas will sell them out at the first opportunity. Han is telling Chewbacca, who is enjoying the small space least of all, that there may be a way to finally stand up. They open the top of the sand crawler. They pop open the top of the sand crawler and begin blasting not at the stormtroopers, but at the ridge just below them, causing an instant avalanche. The stormtroopers are falling in, and it activates the grenades they had armed to use against the Jawas. There is nothing left but a smoking crater. The only problem is now the Jawas have to go through the Jundlin Wastes, which they had been of hoping to avoid because of the Sand People and of an unknown menace. The Sand People divert because they see something out in the desert. It is something that looks like a giant moisture evaporator. Luke touches it and gets a cold tingle. Suddenly he shouts, Han, Chewbacca, we've got to get the Jawas away from this thing fast. They all run. Chewbacca even picking up two of the Jawas that aren't running fast enough. And they dive behind the ridge. Something impossible happens as the scene goes white. When they come back, everything around them is 
frozen. That includes the sand crawler. The Jawas have survived. They have survived because they ducked for cover. But the sand crawler, under the weight of its metal, begins to shatter and falls into pieces. This device is able to freeze anything in its range instantly, destroying it. Luke now understands what happened to that frozen bantha that he saw in the last episode. One of the Jawas alerts them that a transport is coming. They have to hide. This transport is not just carrying stormtroopers, but also Baron Tog and his scientist brother, Silas. Silas is saying, if you examine the bodies of those little creatures in the machine, you'll find they're frozen as well. Nothing can survive in the radius of the conductor tower when it generates the Omega Frost. Wait, I'm sorry. I, I didn't have quite the appropriate voice when I said that. When it generates the Omega Frost. Okay, so it's it's not quite as scary as the Death Star, but, you know, it still kills people. One of the Imperials alerts the two brothers. By the way, I don't know if this is a purposeful dig, but with his cold-weather clothing, Baron Tog, with his electronic eyes and parka, looks exactly like Captain Cold from the DC Universe. I don't know if that's just a little inside joke that this is Marvel. I don't know. I'll let you decide. But when they find that there are rebels nearby possibly spying on them, they begin to fire with the laser cannon. However, Baron Tog is saying to make sure that Luke Skywalker is not killed. He wants him alive to be dealt with personally. Luke is showing that he's been paying attention in the various strategic planning with the rebellion, he realizes that if the Jawas simply retreat, the Imperials will cut them off and destroy them all. Instead, Luke is forming an alliance with the Jawas with a plan of attack. When the Imperials' transport comes around the corner, it finds that the Jawas have not only fled, but they're coming right at them. Now, the transport is a strong vehicle, but the Sandcrawler is huge! They have no choice but to turn on a dime, which causes it to flip over on its side. That gives the Jawas, and of course the Rebels, the chance they need to escape. Luke is listening to the Jawas, and they are saying that they have some extra Skyhopper propellant. And Luke and Han have an idea. Using Chewbacca's incredible strength, he hurls the propellant out of the crawler behind them as the transport is coming after them. Luke is thinking to himself about how difficult making this shot will be as he's on top of the transport. And you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? That means that it's time for... Dramatic Reenactment Blast the way this lumbering monstrosity rattles and shakes! Still, this shouldn't be any tougher than potting womp rats from a land speeder with Uncle Owen's outmoded old energy rifle. Come to think of it, that was pretty tough. That reading of Luke was done by Chris Morse from the Supervillain Corner Podcast. What a difference in readings from his rendition of Darth Vader in an earlier show. Supervillain Corner brings in talented voice actors from all over the world to read original characters. It's an advice show with superpowers. You can find SVC at supervillaincorner.podbean.com. I highly recommend it. Thanks, Chris. As you can imagine, Luke manages to make these key shots. The narrator tells us that Luke's shots are true. Propellant drums explode in a fiery spray, producing a chain reaction that touches all the drums spread across the plains until a massive wall of flame rises before the pursuing carriers of the Empire's troops. The warriors are left but one choice, halt or be destroyed. One of them manages to turn, but the other one goes through and explodes. Luke is saying that the Alliance must know about this new weapon that the Tog family has created for the Empire. That's when C-3PO chimes up. It turns out the Jawas have used some used coolant, which he's not too happy about, but it has been able to revive him and R2-D2. They are saying that with this used coolant, it will still help them, and therefore will also help the speeder. They're able to get on their way while the Jawas get lost in the Dune Sea. Luke is saying that Tag's scheme may not be finished, but neither are we. And that ends! Star Wars number 32. Very exciting 
adventure out on the desert wastes. I need you to hang in there, ladies and gentlemen, because next week we have lightsaber action, action, action. You have a wonderful day, and may the Force be with you. No! You failed your highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. Thank you for listening to the Vox Box Star Wars podcast. Join the Vox Box Facebook page to keep up with the community. Have a great day, and may the Force be with you. All right, Mr. Corley, uh, this is a uh, recording for you, uh, for your Star Wars podcast. But I was going to go to Tashi Station for some power converters. All right, here we go. Converters. All right, here we go.